how one of my first horror stories ended up in an official D&D product. Or, at least, that's how the legend goes. This was way back when, when I first started DMing. The Halcyon Days of 3.5, in around summer of 2004. We only had the starter set to go on, but it was enough for myself and a couple of friends to enjoy getting into the hobby. Mainly, though, this meant we were limited on options. Nonetheless, I came up with a nice little adventure for us to play over a weekend we had together. It started off simply enough. The livestock was disappearing, so go investigate. People say they saw a pack, but there's only one set of footprints. And displacer beast. It was chilling on the bottom floor of a ruined tower where they'd find the real quest. Things did not go well for the party. There were two players and what I called a DMPC at the time, but I later came to realize was the right way to balance out the party with an NPC. We were in a rural town. A group of five is hard to assemble generally, but especially so when you can't drive yet. I figured a Displacer Beast would be a little too much for a first level party, so I reduced the health and damage and said it was wounded. But they just had no good answer for the displacement. Fearing a TPK at the start of what promised to be a fun session, I made a decision that has cast a long shadow over my time as a DM. You stand your ground, awaiting the monster's assault, your spear in front of you, ready to parry. It has a different plan in mind. I roll a fake roll. It wraps its tentacles around your spear and wrist, hoisting you into the air. You're tossed into a wall, make a fort save, and the beast escapes. All in all, the Audible accomplished exactly what I wanted it to, and if I'm being honest, I feel the rest of the session was a good lesson for an early DM. They investigate the tower while they rest up and want to get vengeance before moving on to the real plot. So I dropped a filler random encounter later. The player it happened to even thought it was cool, but I still felt a little off about the call, so I hopped onto a form I liked. You see, friends, this is not a horror story of DM versus the table. It is a story of the DM versus society. I made a post on the old GameFAQs 215 pen and paper RPGs. I briefly described the story and asked two questions. Could a displacer beast even do that? And was it wrong to fudge the role and end the encounter with a cutscene? After all, it was kind of my fault that they didn't have a very fair fight. This was divisive, to say the least. Some details were fair to criticize, like the fortitude save. And people did latch on to the phrase DMPC with a fury, regardless of the fact it was clearly not an abusive one. And people were getting downright nasty. After about 100 posts in a few days, which was already super busy by form standards at the time, I made pretty much the only serious follow-up I did. By this point, there were two clear camps. Eh, it's got an 18 in strength, and the PC was a half-elf. Not the craziest thing to happen, even if I wouldn't do it. The mechanics were wonky, but who cares? The players didn't notice. Versus... I'm the worst DM they've ever heard of. Take that Final Fantasy bullcrap out of Mahabi and never DM again. I did want to make one more attempt at clarifying, though, and try to stress that this DMPC was a cowardly priest who healed them up after battles and had a few divination hints if they got stuck. Also, that aside from the fort save thing, I was going to take the approach of it was alright but don't rely on it. A decision I still stand by. I don't know if it was the idea that maybe, just maybe, I'd respond more and they could potentially win or something, but that made it worse. The attacks got more personal, and the argument exploded. The GameFAQs forum had this thing where a thread would get locked at 500 replies. And from when I posted, which was probably Sunday, to the end of that same week, 
the second thread was pushing 350-ish. And even if I stayed out of it, I was a dumb teen reading every one of them. I had apparently somehow managed to trip every flashpoint in ATTRPG forum. I bent rules. I showed mercy to my players. I faked rolls. I had a DMPC. And I had a cinematic cutscene. I really don't remember many of the threads that hit that post limit the first time, especially that early. The second one eventually did, and the third made it to the triple digits. Most of it was vitriolic arguing. I legitimately stopped playing for a while because it made me too anxious, but eventually I got over that as I matured. When I drifted back to that forum, by the later 2000s, the Displacer Beast Who Throws Fools Hecka Far was a beloved meme, and one I'd even see on other forums. Not quite as much as other titans of 3E, like Poon Poon, but the DBWTFHF was always there as some lesser demigod of that pantheon. So much so that it even got a nod in a 4E supplement, at least according to the legend. Mind you, I didn't even know about this until recently when I saw someone else make a reference to the DBWTFHF about 15 years after the initial post. But in the Fury Monster Vault, there's an elite Displacer Beast variant that gets a reaction when bloodied. It can attempt to toss, or really shove, up to three targets for 15 feet. Perfect to get those two players and their NPC priests out of the way before darting off. I've seen enough archived posts to know I'm far from the only one who considered that a proper nod. So yeah, I'm that naive young DM who made the DBWTFHF, and I know it's not the biggest meme, but he's had an enduring legacy, and if you remember him, I hope it'll bring you joy to know his legend has lived on as a folk monster in many a small town setting. But in any case, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you have a story that you'd like me to narrate, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching, and have a good one.